Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Rolling Conversations this afternoon. We are here tonight to talk to wheelchair tennis um, star Ben Weeks. Okay, Ben, welcome to Rolling Conversations. How are you doing? Hi, everyone. Uh, mate, it's great that you can join us and um, also to introduce you perhaps to um, some of our community who might not uh, have seen you before. Obviously, all of those familiar with wheelchair tennis um, will know you as a four-time Paralympian, but uh, part of Rolling Conversations is also a way to get different parts of our community, you know, be it the wheelchair rugby guys or uh, the basketballers or whomever, to um, to understand uh, the story of people in different sports. So uh, hopefully we'll get a bunch of people from the wheelchair tennis community jumping on and asking questions and engaging, but likewise it's great for others to see you as well. Uh, Matt, I wanted to ask you um, first up just about, um, uh, you, you know, your early life, uh, just so we can understand um, uh, you're one of four boys and um, and you grew up a, a Strathfield boy. Yeah, that's right. I've uh, kind of lived my whole life here in Strathfield. Um, good place to, to grow up, I guess. Uh, I've got, yeah, three brothers. I'm an identical twin, uh, which is always kind of, I guess, something pretty unique. Um, and, yeah. Kind of started my my wheelchair journey. Actually, started through wheelchair sports. So it's great to be to be on here today to to kind of share a bit of my story. Yeah, it is great, and, and we'll get on and talk about your how you got involved in wheelchair tennis for the first time. Um, how did the boys get on as brothers? You know, but both growing up, and you know, now the four of you, do you get together on a regular basis? Yeah, uh, my oldest brother, he's down in Adelaide with his family, so see them like maybe a couple of times a year. Um, and then I see my other brothers pretty regularly, They're both still in Sydney. Um, but I think growing up, we were, especially me and my twin brother, we were pretty competitive with each other, um, but always kind of in a friendly way. And our parents always kind of made us um, stick together and support each other all the time. So if I was, I don't know, playing a tennis tournament, they'd all be forced to come along and reluctantly cheer for me <laughs> um, and vice versa when they had stuff going on. So. And what sport did you play then um, as, a, as, a, as a real young fella there, sort of primary school age? What sort of stuff were you into? Uh, I was pr pretty much all over the shop. I was uh, playing basketball, tennis, swimming, a um, bit of soccer, um, and then, yeah, basically every weekend kind of driving between all the different, all the different activities. So um, kind of, I guess, kept me out of trouble as a kid growing up and uh, something that I loved and, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Yvonne Talbot just jumping on and saying I'm watching. So um Yvonne. To, to yeah. Yvonne, yes, of course. So and and Ben, so you must have met Yvonne through the years. Were you uh, part of the Junior Willie's Christmas camp? Is that um, something yeah, you I've, did? Yeah, I've been been through through there. Um, I've I've known Yvonne and um, Brendan for for years. Um, I think like for me, that's one of the special things is is that real family vibe that wheelchair sports has has going for it i mean when i saw um all the guys that have been on this live stream in the last couple of weeks it was pretty much knew knew all of them really well and some of them have been like massive uh role models in my career so um it's it's awesome to be to be a part of this yeah yeah it's cool and we're really thrilled and then kat fahim there so he's been waiting for this one so um <laughs> uh, i say good day to kat as well who i understand was a coach of yours yeah that's right um we used to actually hit um, quite a bit out of the courts that are um, were just out the back of where wheelchair sports officers used to be in ride. Um, so yeah, she uh, has been a massive um, contributor to my success over the years, and still continues to to help me out wherever she can. Very cool. Um, ben, let's talk about um, how you came to play wheelchair tennis. Then, um, my understanding is uh, you acquired your disability at, at age 13, 14. Is that right? Yeah, I was thirteen. Um, I was just sitting at home, and I started to get um, pins and needles in my legs, and I kind of got up to walk around, thinking that I was just sitting funny, and they'd gone to sleep. Um, but as I got moving around, they kind of got worse and worse, and to the point where by the time <laughs> My dad drove me down to the just our local GP. I pretty much could just make it inside and then I couldn't really stand anymore after that. Um, and what they worked out is that I had a blood clot um, in my spinal cord that basically prevented the oxygen getting to 
to my legs and uh, did did a lot of nerve damage. Um, but I was pretty lucky. I'm, I'm still able to walk today with a walking stick, um, just use the wheelchair for playing sports and if I've got to go like really long distances. Um, so I think when in that those early days, like uh, I was in the children's hospital in Westmead and my physio there, she, um, she knew that sport was something that was kind of missing. I was missing a lot. Um, and so she got me in touch with wheelchair sports, New South Wales, and um, I kind of went to a few of the come and try days, all the different sports that were happening. And I probably in the beginning, uh, I would say basketball was probably the easiest one to, to pick up on. So that was kind of where I headed at first. And then uh, I tried tennis a couple of times. And actually, the first few times I tried tennis, I absolutely hated it. It was it was so difficult. And um, I already knew how to hit the ball, but just traveling and, and getting around the court, like all the balls were pretty much just going past me. And it was very frustrating in the beginning. So um, I think like, I was lucky that in those days um, they had a bit of a squad happening weekly um, with a lot of lot of good guys um, who were very encouraging to me and were like, oh, just keep going at it. And um, and so kind of week after week I'd get back out there and kind of slowly start to see some some improvement and, and then kind of the enjoyment came. And as well, I was very lucky at that time that Hawley was uh, – David Hall, who was on here just the other week, uh, he was one of the top guys in the world um, and had been for, for a few years by then. And he kind of took me under his wing a little bit and kind of showed me the ropes. And he was really encouraging me to kind of get get out there and keep keep at it. And, he, um, and then I was lucky enough to witness him um, dominating during the Paralympics here in Sydney. And that's kind of where I guess the big spark came that, that that was something that I really wanted to to go after and do. Um, and so for the next few years, I, I just worked really hard and and made it to my first games in Athens in 2004. And he was kind of there the whole time, like encouraging me and we'd go overseas together. I was still pretty young back then. And so he kind of was like looking out for me a lot. And um, it was good to have that um just a real professional like role model, like someone I could really look up to and go, oh, this is the guy that's doing all the right things, like going to bed early, um, not missing any training sessions and just being really like a fierce competitor on the court as well. So that was always something that I really looked up to and, and tried to to attain, I guess, yeah. It is one of the great things about the wheelchair sports New South Wales community, isn't it, that people wrap an arm around each other and, and particularly people that are new to the sport. We had a situation only on rolling conversations in the last week or so where someone logged on and said, hey, you know, can I get involved in wheelchair racing? And Louise Savage sent a message and all of a sudden, you know, we're talking to someone about uh, getting involved in sport. So it's certainly one thing the organisation does very well. I just wanted to – Rebecca Robertson just said, hey, mate, so presuming – Rebecca, known to you there, and a shout out to Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. Good day, Rebecca. How are you doing? Um, and it's great to have everyone online and watching on. Um, so Ben, it was a pretty quick transition then. Obviously, you spoke about David Hall as his influence. What was your first mm. Paralympics? Was that two thousand and four? Yeah, two thousand and four in Athens. Uh, I remember it pretty pretty well. It was uh, just an amazing experience. Uh, I think the biggest memory was just walking out during the opening ceremony and just hearing like the full stadium just like erupt i think i think we're lucky as, as australians because we come early in the alphabet so the crowd's still pretty um rolled up by the time we're, we're walking out i wouldn't want to be from zimbabwe and people have been like cheering for an hour already um but yeah it was uh that was like yeah just an amazing amazing experience and probably each games that's one of like the highlights is is that feeling you get walking out and and representing uh, Australia and um, just knowing like how hard you've worked to get there and um, each each game's actually my parents um, have their four yearly holiday um, okay. to that country and so they're always there in the stand as well so that's something that's that's pretty special for me as well um, to have them there um, in the crowd and then I think. Yeah. I think in my first games, I think in the first round, I got 
I got a pretty good draw for the first round. I played this guy from South Africa who was, um, I think we were ranked kind of around a similar ranking because uh, I'm pretty sure I just scraped into making it to the game. So I was one of the lowest ranked guys in there. And um, so I remember I played him. I won my first round there. And then I came up against uh, this guy from Netherlands, uh, Robin Amelan, and he ended up going on to win gold um at that game so that was a a humbling experience there in the in the second round i think i got maybe two games off him um yeah, right. but yeah it was it was an amazing experience and and just being part of that that australian team and i think in the tennis because we're traveling around the world and we're always kind of um hanging out together it's just like you kind of keep that that little family unit going um, during those big moments as well. So that's that's always something really special. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I've noticed that so Tony Saul's there and, and Bridie and so our wheelchair racing community, and it's really great to see, as I say, that the mix of sports getting involved. But it also occurs to me that um, I might get you to explain how classification works in wheelchair tennis because, as I said to you on the phone, if someone comes in and often is the case they don't understand how it works, they say, well, does Ben Weeks play Dylan Alcott, for example, and we all know Dylan and the extraordinary things he's doing. But can you just give us a, a, an explanation of how what the categories are for classification within wheelchair tennis, and where do you fit? Yeah, so in wheelchair tennis, we've got um, we've only got two classes. Um, so it's one of the sports that doesn't have too many classes. Um, so there's the open division which I play in, which is basically you have two of your limbs, your legs affected. Um, it can be like a, a variety of conditions like amputees, um, spinal cord injuries. Um, and then the second division is called the quad division. And so they have a third and possibly fourth limb affected. So they have something wrong with their arms as well, which makes it a little bit tougher for them to, to obviously move the chair and also hit the ball. So some of those guys might be strapping the racket to their hand because they can't um, grip onto the, onto the racket that well. Um, whereas for in the open division, basically all your arms are uh, as strong as as anybody's, and you that's how you um, get around the court and, and hit the ball. Um, so yeah, I think uh, it's one of the things that I really like about that I like about tennis is is that it's pretty open, um, and each player kind of um, tries to maximize whatever their disability is to what abilities they can can have. So, um, for example, you might be a double amputee, um, so you, you don't have as much weight, so you can be really fast around the court, or um, you can be like me who walks around, so I've got quite a bit of weight um, to push around, but it, I also have a lot of um, more strength and I can engage my legs a little bit more than those guys. So. I need to try and maximise that to to the best of my abilities, and then try and use that uh, tactically against the other players. Kind of in a similar way to in the able body game, where you have the really tall guys who have the big serves, but don't necessarily move around the court that well. And then you've got the other guys who are more leaner and athletic, and can just run around all day and get every ball back. So um, that's one of the, I guess, challenges in tennis is to try and work out what your strengths are and Part of that is to do with your disability um, and trying to maximise that um, when you when you take on the other guys. So, yeah, cool. Now, I wanted to ask you something. I'm just acknowledging there that Cormac Ryan's watching on. Cormac, of course, was on Rolling Conversations last week, and yeah. um, shout out to Ryan and uh, sorry, Cormac and the Ryan family there. Um, so, who's your equivalent in able body tennis then, in terms of style of play? I mean, are you the are you the um, the Rafa? Of, of the wheelchair tennis world or are you a, a a big server or you know what's your feature as a player yeah i would say uh i'm a bigger server one of the bigger bigger servers on the on the tour so i kind of use that to to set up a shorter ball that i can then attack um as i said because i'm walking around my legs are pretty heavy so i'm not i'm probably never going to be the fastest guy around the court so i need to try and um take the ball really early, take time away from my opponents and try and win my points um, that way, which is uh, a bit different to some of the other guys who just love to push push all day and get everything back. And um, so, yeah, that's probably my my game style is, is to do with the serve and first strike and trying to be 
as aggressive as I can with that. Yeah, okay. Um, ben, you've got many strings to your bow, though, and, and in talking, we discovered that you and I went to the same school. Um, yeah, that's right. A reasonable distance between us, obviously. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, you're you're an old boy of St Pat's at Strathfield. Um, yeah, and, that's right. And I say good day to anyone watching uh, uh, from St Pat's uh, tonight, and there is a whole bunch of people that said they were going to tune in. So good day to everyone. Yeah. There. Awesome. Um, but then also you. Um, uh, you went to McDonald College then. Uh, was it year eleven and twelve? Yeah, just my last last uh, years. I went there. Um, they were a little bit more flexible um, because I'd already started competing in tennis, and um, so they were allowing me to um, to travel a bit and kind of fit my schooling in with that. So they they allowed me that kind of extra. Um, flexibility to to get out there and, and keep doing what I was trying to do so and, and so McDonald College is a performing arts um, uh, school um, you're a, a, a pianist as well as a, a bunch of other things I imagine having gone to the school tell us about that creative side of you obviously we, you know we, we know now a whole bunch of things about the sporting side of Ben Weeks but tell us about that creative side and that musical side of, of what you like to do yeah, so since um since pretty young we had a piano in my house and me and, and my brother particularly my brother's particularly my twin brother um, we'd kind of hear songs on TV and we'd just try and go to the piano and just try and work them out and then uh, my parents decided oh we should get them into lessons so we started lessons I think my first piano teacher uh, I really didn't get along with and <laughs> it wasn't that enjoyable but then I found a really good teacher and um really fell in love with with playing the piano and i think there's actually like a lot of similarities between music and sport um in terms of like that discipline to to practice and um i guess try and get better at what you're doing and and work on ways to kind of problem solve those things and uh and then at the and then as well when i started performing and doing piano competitions and concerts then it was about kind of I guess getting on the stage and and trying to um, produce your best in the in that moment, which is is very similar to sport. I mean, we're training all the time, and then you've kind of got to get on the court and and bring it on the day. So, I think there are kind of a lot of similarities, and I think like obviously in music, it's it's very creative as well. And I write a little bit of music, and um, but I think in, as well in in sport, you you can be creative as well, and um, it's about trying to find those uh, in tennis specifically. It's like you've got to find those weaknesses of the other guy, match them up with your strengths and then come up with game plans and also be kind of flexible in the moment. When they change something up, you've got to react and, and adapt. So I think there is a lot of like similarities between the two. Um, and I think probably in my younger life, I was more into the music than the sport. But then that's kind of helped me in my sporting career, having that foundation. In um, I remember my teacher; she was she was pretty strict. Like she was very lovely, but she was strict as well. So um, I kind of enjoyed that um, punishment when I wasn't like sitting correctly or made a mistake. Like I would always get punished, but um, it kind of made me work hard and and get better. So. Yeah, cool. Now, I asked you and you said, yes, you're going to play a little piece for us tonight. What, what that will give us is the opportunity for anyone who wants to ask a question of Ben to send them through. I know that Stefan Roach uh, said he can confirm Ben's a massive server. So <laughs> thank you, Stefan. Sounds like he might have been on the receiving end of one of your big serves at some yeah, stage. Yeah, we've played, we've played quite a bit, me and Stefan. So, yeah. He's, yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. um, so, um, so Ben, give us give give us a give us a, a play. Do you, what, what piece are you going to play for us? Uh, I'm going to play uh, just to keep in the maybe Tokyo theme. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a song by a Japanese um, pianist called Yuruma. Um, some people might know it. It's kind of a I guess a modern classical piece. So I'm just going to put my glasses on because I need to read the read the notes. Um, of course, take your time. Yeah. So, folks, yeah, do get your questions ready, and we'll um, after we've had a listen to Ben play, we'll uh, we'll get some questions through and continue the conversation. So, take it away, Ben. Sure thing. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, mate, how cool. What a privilege to have you play for us. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. It's, been a, it's been a while, but, yeah. Hey, hey, do you play for pleasure much? Do you, um, you know, do you, do you find yourself sitting down during the week and just having a play, or is it more structured? Yeah. How does it work? Uh, no, for now it's just for, for enjoyment. Um, so it's kind of, I find it very relaxing just to come home at the end of some days and just have a bash for a while. Um, and then, yeah, I've got uh, my little niece. She comes around and tries to play some songs for me. So, yeah, that's always always nice to to do that. Yeah, mate. Well, that was lovely. Thank you. And um, you're the first person to play a song on Rolling Conversations for us. So you're there basically you throwing down the gauntlet to everyone that comes from now on. Everyone likes yeah. to do a little song. Well, um, I can see some guitars in the background there, mate, so you might need to um, pull yeah. those down. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll block them so you can't see. Hey, um, uh, Ben, we've got a, a question here from Finn Broadbent who says, how have, how have you stayed motivated through the period of isolation? Um, it's a good question. Uh, it has been a bit of a unusual time. Um, so I was actually over in the States playing a tournament when um, things started to go down. And uh, we played the first round and then... The second day we were kind of getting ready to head to the courts to play our next match and then they they messaged us all and were like oh we've, we're actually cancelling the tournament so um i was able lucky enough to get on a flight back home pretty early um so i didn't need to kind of go into the hotel lockdown for 14 days so i was at home um pretty much since then and uh i think like it has been a challenge to stay stay motivated because it's kind of just it's just change and and trying to adapt and and do something different so trying to find ways to i guess keep with your goals but trying to do it in a different environment and um so i was lucky enough to get um a pretty good gym set up at home with a few different machines and uh so i'm kind of set with that and for tennis we were pretty lucky um i know it's different in every state but in in new south wales where i live um we were one of the first dates to bring tennis back um, for one-on-one -on -one stuff, which was uh, about two and a half weeks ago now. So that that was when I was able to get back on court. Um, but yeah, I think with the motivation side, it, it is a bit of a challenge because especially we don't know when things are going to start back up again for us in terms of our um, the international tour. So you kind of don't know exactly when you're aiming to to be ready to go again so we're just trying to be ready as ready as we can for when it does um start up again indeed uh, warwick holmes the rooster up there in bathurst is uh who's, a, who's one of our great wheelchair racing community members uh, asked uh, do you find that music helps with training uh definitely i mean uh i studied classical piano but i like pretty much all kinds of music and and i think I always love to have music on when I'm training, especially when I do my gym stuff. Um, I just find it gets me through the sessions a lot easier. Um, we don't really have it when I'm playing um, on the court so much. Um, but yeah, definitely when I do my fitness stuff, it it definitely helps to to get in that rhythm. And um, what do you like good... to listen to, Ben? Uh, I mix it up, but I probably I probably I don't really listen to like heavy, um, hard music when I'm training. I just find like songs that I enjoy. So I like a lot of R and B and hip hop stuff. So I try and throw that on it. It's probably not necessarily the the most motivating music, but because I enjoy it, it kind of puts me in a good good mood to train. Yeah, cool. Hey, yeah. Uh, so Pat says, uh, who's your favorite training partner, and how important is it to have someone that can challenge you? Yeah, I think. Um, oh, favorite training partner. Um, I think, like at the moment, I'm hitting one on one with 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 a coach, and I've been really enjoying that that challenge. She's she's pretty tough, and always trying to pretty much smack the ball at me and see what see what I can do with it. So, um, I think it is it's important to find um, someone that challenges you in training because. Pretty much that's how you're going to get better. Um, I think in tennis, like, I think um, when I first started going overseas and traveling, um, I was pretty much told you're going to lose more than you're going to win, um, especially at the beginning. So um, 
I think out of those losses is where you learn um, what you need to work on, what you need to improve, and and that's how you get better. So um, I think if training's too easy and um, you're not really getting challenged, then you're not really improving that much. So we always try and look at ways, and I think over the years I've kind of um, gone through different stages and different phases of being like, okay, we need to change this up, we need to try something new. Um, so we're always being quite creative with, with that side of things um, to keep the motivation and the interest and um, try and keep the body really healthy. Yeah, cool. Hey, I've noticed a, a message there from Richard Cordukes who says, good on you, Ben, and certainly heard a lot about you and your great achievements. Love to catch up sometime and best wishes. So yeah, um, awesome. shout out to Richard and thanks, mate, for uh, for that message. So um, David's question here is, will we be seeing you at the Wheelchair Tennis New South Wales Open this year? Yeah, well, I mean, as long as it's going ahead, um, I think that's what we're all kind of waiting at the moment is to, I know like for the international tour, they've given us like a July date um, for return to competition, but I'm pretty sure that's going to get pushed back even later. So um, I think probably nationally we'll have, we'll get a few tournaments up and running before that happens. So probably the, the New South Wales Open will be part of that. And definitely if I'm around, I'll be, I'll be there for sure. We'd love to have you. And um, and finally, a question here from Lynn. What has been the highlight of your career? Good question, I suppose, across four Paralympics and so many other tournaments in between uh, on the international stage. Is there one highlight that stands out for you? Um, I'd have to say, like, each of the games have been, like, special in their own ways um, and all def definite highlights. I think from my first one where everything was brand new, um, and it was just like a whirlwind experience um, to my most recent games where um, probably things didn't go the way I wanted. Um, and then I think, so you kind of learn from each of those experiences. And, and I think the biggest thing is like learning to enjoy those moments because you know they're, uh, I think especially after um, this year's games getting delayed, you kind of realise how lucky you are to have them so um i think yeah the the games are always a massive highlight and it's what you work for those four years to to achieve so definitely i can say those those are my highlights so Very hopefully cool. a fifth, fifth highlight next year Probably absolutely not. to become a five-time paralympian uh, i just wanted to call out laura south who's there um and, and watching on g'day laura and a whole bunch of people we've had some great questions uh ben can i i just leave with one question at the end yeah. how do people get involved in wheelchair tennis we've got a, a huge community of people who have been playing a whole range of different sports but uh often wheelchair tennis isn't necessarily as high on the radar how, do, how does someone have a go and get started in wheelchair tennis yeah i think well the easiest way is obviously you can get in touch with either wheelchair sports new south wales or with tennis new south wales um wheelchair tennis is now pretty well integrated into the national body. So with Tennis Australia, um, they support like a lot of the, the programs around the country. And I think at the moment, especially with the juniors, there's been like a big resurgence in in the numbers of players. So I think for a few years, there wasn't that many players coming through from the, from the younger ages. But now um, I think with guys like Dillard and stuff out there um, in the media a lot, um, it's definitely created a lot more interest in tennis. So um, but pretty much you can just call up your local club as well. I think um, there's enough information out, out there now. Um, and I think that's the great thing about tennis is you can play against anyone. So I'm training against able-bodied players all, pretty much all the time now. So you can literally hit with every, anyone you want. Um, so I think that's one of the, the great things. And you only need one other person or, I mean, you can even go out there by yourself and bash down some serves as well. So um yeah definitely okay. and if it's a struggle at the beginning um persevere because uh it does get a lot more enjoyable and there's amazing opportunities that that come from it 
Right. Well, uh, Kath summed it up well there, saying you're a great competitor, respected around the world and all around good guy. Um, so thanks, Ben. Uh, and I echo those comments. Uh, I uh, We haven't met yet in person, but I'm really glad to have met you this way. Um, uh, we've heard a lot about you at our place, uh, Wheelchair Sports New South Wales. It's a lot of love for you in our community. So we just wish you all the best with your wheelchair tennis. And also just to say thank you for sharing your beautiful music with us tonight too. That was a real pleasure. No worries. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Mick. Cheers. Good, good to meet you, mate. Go well, and we'll uh, we'll keep watching you with interest. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Cheers.